Hello, everyone. You have tuned in to the Python Pulse live stream, which is every second Friday of the month, uh, this time at 11 a.m. Pacific. If you're in my uh, part of the world, it is 2 p.m. If you are in another part of the world, maybe GMT, it would be 7 p.m. your time. Um, I'm your host, Dawn Wages. I'm the Python community product manager here at Microsoft, and I am thrilled. I mean, I say this every episode, but I am thrilled to bring you this episode on GitHub and VX Code. Uh, we have one of my like really good friends. I like that we've been homies since before Microsoft. We're homies at Microsoft. I'm just, it's going to be a really vibe of an episode today. I'm really excited. Um, and I see a bunch of people joining as you all are coming in. We're watching the chat. Tell us where you're joining from. This is like a, a global stream. We get people from everywhere and I'll we'll start shouting you out and saying hello in the chat. Um, so if you are coming back, uh, welcome. If this is your first time here, welcome, welcome. Uh, make sure you sound off in the chat where you're from. And this the goal is to keep everything like really interactive. This week we'll be showing off GitHub extensions and VS Code with Python. And we're doing a, this a new thing. Every episode, we have a dedicated VS Code profile, which means we gather all of the extensions and preferences and settings into one profile. And we show you that we give you that link so you can download it yourself and play with all the things as we're talking or later and you could share it with your friends uh, and you we teach you how to customize your settings and make them really shareable which is really cool uh so uh, a previous episode we had data wrangler episode uh, profile um and our last one with sarah kaiser we had a really cool django profile where we were building a django uh, a dev container for the django project but first we're going to jump into announcements The Polyglot notebook, notebook for VS Code now supports Python and R. So with this release, you can now use Python and R along with other previously available languages such as C Sharp, SQL, and KQL. Uh, with the addition of Python and R environments, data access, cleaning, and modeling are easier than ever before. So first you'll install VS Code, then you'll install the Polyglot Notebook extension from the VS Code Marketplace. You can install .NET 7 SDK, then you'll install R and or Python, and then the Anaconda distribution, and then you're good to go. Um, all of these notes are in the uh, show notes, and I'll show you that later as well. We'll walk through that together. I also just... There was a full day live stream called Pi Day that was hosted by Pamela Fox. It happened a few months ago, but I just, I cannot uh, tell you how great that live stream was. I encourage everybody to go and check that out. It was a deep dive into tons of uh, Python intersections with uh, deploying to Azure, containers, VS Code. Um, we had fast API, uh, cloud databases, containerizing your application. That was on May 2nd, uh, links in the show notes. Go, go check that out. We also had our VS Code Day. It's an annual event that happened April 26, a few months ago, but it was went wild. I mean, like we had so many interactions in the chat. We had uh, famous people from all over give really great talks. Pamela Fox was actually one of the great uh, presenters on that day as well. So if you're a Pamela Fox fan like I am, go check out her episode. Um, if you are not able to tune in virtually to learn about data science, accessibility, dev containers, GitHub integration, and all around being becoming a power user in VS Code, all that content is on demand on VS Code on this channel if you're tuning in from YouTube. Uh, we also have Python templates for the VS Code extension, which helps Pythonistas uh, further customize our environments. Uh, we're, we have examples of VS Code profiles for this stream, as I mentioned before, that supercharge your development environment. But if you see things that you'd love to include in your own VS Code profile, we've created an, a template where you get to write more Python and uh, less type, TypeScript, which is like a, just a yay for me. <laughs> Um, one of the community profiles used that use this template is Ruff, uh, the awesome linter that's uh, written by Charlie R. Marsh. And so if you have a really cool extension that uh, we'd like a shout out for Python, you might get featured on the stream. 
Azure App Service now supports Python 3.11, the newest and fastest version of Python yet. It was re- uh, the newest and fastest version was released last October, and Microsoft had to contribute a, a tremendous part of the first step in a multi-year uh, plan to make Python more performant. We have a team and a long-term strategy for contributing to this mission. And don't forget to check out AZD templates. We talk about that every episode, but it's one of the easiest ways to really get started in deploying with Python. Uh, AZD 1.0 is out. Uh, The Azure Developer CLI. AZD is an open source command line tool that accelerates the time it takes for you to take your application from local development environment to the cloud. Uh, It combines high-level application, developer-friendly commands. Think um, init up pipeline config, all those things. Uh, It's extensible and declarative, and it really gives you like this blueprint to keep things simple and easy to use. So I recommend that if you're deploying to Azure. There's also Azure Container Apps, which is supporting some um, new things for Python. Um, And we also have Azure SDK, which is commonly um, pushing out new improvements constantly. So keep keep an eye out for those. Uh, So you can check out all of these announcements in the show notes, as I mentioned, and I usually don't show the show notes, but I think it might be helpful too. It's really just like a GitHub uh, markdown file, Um, and it'll also help me navigate to our our first task today, which is showing off one of our VS Code profiles, and I'm going to bring our our guest on, Jay, to talk through this profile with me. What's up? (laughs) Hey. How's it going? She she missed all the hand gestures, which is great. I was I was just I was just hyping you up. It was, oh. I love it. I thank love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hype you up too. I like yay. Um okay, so I just clicked a link. I exported this from my VS code. Um and this link is also in the show notes and it what it does is it brings up originally it brings up uh, VS code.dev, which is in the browser, but you can also install it on your local uh, VS code uh, application. And all we have these checkboxes of all of the extensions, the UI state snippets. If I include them, there are some profiles where I include snippets as well. Um, and what I did for this one is I used the default Python, uh, uh, the default Python, uh, profile that comes with it. Uh, you could get like all of the recommended settings if you want. And then I added a whole bunch of my favorite and some of my coworkers' favorite GitHub and Git extensions. Do any of these look familiar to you, Jay? Do you use some of these? And what will we be talking about today? Oh yeah, we're gonna, we're going to talk about a few of these extensions. Okay. Um, I I will also say that I also added a profile as well. Yeah. Um, it's. You took way more care in yours. <laughs> I was like, this is what I'm doing, export, uh, which is great because that that's one of the best features of VS Code is if I'm doing something and someone says, hey, that looks really cool, I can just share it with them with a the click with reckless abandon. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I knew, oh, I'm so excited to check out your profile because you showed me a whole bunch of really cool themes before this call. I am so down for the Studio Ghibli themes. So check that out. And you also are using some extensions that I'm not familiar with. So check out both profiles. Uh, I'll pull my uh, share down and we'll jump to your PC. And then you can go deep into this cool stuff that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this is is just my, my environment. I was... I tried to be a little bit smart about this and I have an entire window up that's just the extensions that I want to cover in this. (laughs) And then I realized I forgot one. So I am going to go in and go check that out really quick. And it's important that we start with that one because honestly, um, I I told Don I was going to talk about this. I I have this thing called ADHD. (laughs) Um, And it... I forget where I'm at sometimes. And in order to make sure I remember where I am, uh, I like to color code my my VS Code windows. So one of the nice things I can do with this is it's called Peacock. It's from John Papa, who is an amazing, amazing developer. I need to reload this window because it is not loaded. And that makes me sad. Uh, But if I were to use Peacock in a different window like this one, Okay, if I just open a new window that has Peacock installed and set up, I can then quickly set up a different color, or so I thought. It is not wanting to work with me right now. We'll test that later. You'll actually see this later. Uh, Some of the projects that we look at are different colors, like that one. Boom, did it. Yeah. 
Uh, oh, we're going to show so many cool things to our friends. Yeah. So we have Rohit from Malaysia. Uh, hi from South Africa. We got some Bay Area friends in there. What's up, Pamela from Berkeley? How are you doing? Oh, this yeah. is exciting. Yay. Good things for our friends across the world. Yeah. So you might be wondering how I quickly just like did like that and then pulled up a different, a whole different project and got it up and running so quickly. Uh, that's actually the second extension that I want to, I want to share with my friends. Uh, and that is the, uh, no, go back, go back, go back. I lost that window. No, that's fine. Um, that is called, what it's called now, project manager, because we all need a project manager in our lives. Yeah. Um, this is by Alessandro. Um, it just makes it so that I can quickly jump back and forth between projects that I have saved. And these are going to be some projects that I'm going to talk about in this Prezo. But um, you can also say, hey, I like this project. I want to work with this. So go to project manager, save project right there. And now you have a quick launch for all of the projects that you're working on, which for me, I jump back and forth between projects. Uh, in my other profile, like some of my other profiles, I have like 17 projects in there. And I just find it a lot easier to come up here, hit Command Shift P. Oh, you can't see the thing. Um, screencast mode, please, thank you. Hit Command Shift P. And then from there, I can just start typing what I'm looking for and have it quickly switch over and just like that, see different color. That means I'm doing something different. Which yeah, is... and just for the for the audience, because it took me a, a minute to know how like intuitive and quick that this can be. Your command shift P opens the command palette. It brings down that drop down menu. You immediately are just and the focus automatically goes to the command menu, uh, command palette, which is super great. You start typing what you need, which was the uh, what is it called again to get the the text on the bottom. Dreamcast uh, mode. Oh, yeah. Screencast mode. Screencast. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not Dreamcast. <laughs> Screencast I mean... mode. And then I mean, we could we could have a gaming episode as well. Um, Cool. And then you were able to just enable that setting very quickly. Cool. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to look up Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog games right now. <laughs> That'll be a problem. And I actually messed up for Project Manager to actually pull up the Project Manager. Um, I'm on a Mac, so it's Command Option P. Okay. It does that. Um, it okay. would be Control Alt P on Windows. Um, so yeah, there was that. Um, and again, I messed up and got rid of my window with all my extensions on it. So can we just talk about the extensions as we go through them? Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Okay. So I've been working on this project called Cookie Cutter Relic Cloud. Uh, for folks who love Cookie Cutter, this is a fun project that we're working on for some stuff that we're doing uh, at Microsoft for our documentation. This sneak preview was so cool. It's really, really fun. Um, however, I don't get to demo that here. Um, that's for another stream sometime. What I want to demo is uh, I'm working on this with the amazing Pamela Fox. And uh, she mentioned in the chat that there's probably a PR waiting for me somewhere. Um, but I can say, oh, waiting for my review. Oh, no, no. Oh, they're not in there. There's a few in here that I did. But as you can see, this extension is called GitHub Pull Requests and Issues. Uh, we can actually look that up. GitHub Pull Requests and Issues. There we go. And it, it does, I, I love extensions that do what they say on the 10. Um, GitHub Pull Requests and Issues. That's what it does. It pulls up your pull requests and issues. But it does a little bit more than that. It doesn't just give me a list of issues. That's, you know, that's whatever. We have this update readme PR here. And oh, so just sent the PR. There it is. Boom. Just like that. <laughs> nice. Got we message. are doing work on this call. Okay. This Live. Is multitasking. Efficiency to the max. And what we see here, we see a couple of things. One, we have these check marks. These check marks mean that all the checks have passed. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's not talk about this one where it didn't pass. We fixed that. <laughs> um, but we see here that tests are still running on this check. So I'm going to wait a minute on that. Um, and I'll, I'll explain why in a little bit. But Let's start with my little update readme, the update readme PR. Let's go to the description. If we click on the description, we can actually look at the entire like statement stuff here. And I know you're like, well, hey, I don't see the files. I don't see the files that were changed. Well, they're right here. So we can just click on the readme. This was the file that was changed. And we can see the actual changes in a review. I'm still in my branch. I'm still doing my little thing here. And 
This is, so far it looks good. Uh, yeah, I think everything here looks great. Uh, yep, cool. So I would approve this. I've already approved it. We're good. Um, so I can go back to the description here. If I wanted to add labels, I could add labels. If I wanted to add milestones, I could add milestones. Mm -hmm. I ultimately just want to, can I add comments? I can add comments. Comment. Now I can either request changes, I can close the pull request. I'm just gonna comment. It's already been approved so we can go from there. And then the best thing I can do is I can just straight up merge this pull request, which we're gonna do. Uh, merge, create the merge commit, and then we're good. Now, usually when you have like a merge commit and things like that, you'll have like a branch. Oh, do we wanna delete this branch? Um, no. We're not going to delete that branch because that's on Pamela's side. So I don't want to delete the branch. She may not, she may not uh, be ready for that. But what we are ready for is that we do see that we got the test working and that check passed. Cool. Now, something else is also happening. Because we have these tests, we have these GitHub Actions. Um, we're also going to use the GitHub Actions example as well. So GitHub Actions allows me to also see actions as they're running here in my little sidebar window. And this is great because I can see that when I pushed that update readme, I now have, you know, hey, I, this was pushed. You know, it was great. Good job. We're running the test GitHub action. And we can actually see what step that it's currently on. Now, sadly, we can't see inside of the actual step. We don't want to, we don't want to micromanage our GitHub actions. If we wanted to, of course, we can just go into the step and then click on the little globe here. Mm -hmm. And that'll just open up GitHub for us. And then we can look at it from there. Yeah. But this is great because, again, I don't, I don't need to go and check GitHub and see if that thing is running. I can see all of my failed tests here. Yep. I can see where I fixed it. Yep. And then I can see that there's currently one in progress that's running. And if I want to check and see what's happening, boom, there I am. Cool. Cool. So, yeah, I'm going to pause because I didn't know. I've just been rambling, so there might be questions. Not rambling. And, and this is really helpful because I, I installed this extension right after our previous conversation earlier this week when we were debugging some uh, GitHub Actions things. Um, I got Django to deploy via GitHub Actions. I love it. I love um, it. So uh, that's, that's really great. And also, I mean, having the entire build in maybe the left um, side of the window, I think that deserves a, a new window screen for all of that context. But this is really great to ex expedite a lot of your um, uh, workflow to keep it all in the same context in VS Code and not have to change windows. Mm -hmm. um, and there are a couple of different tools that I, can, that I do use that go mm -hmm. in different windows. Like actually here, I can move this over to a separate window for like my okay. pull requests and issues. Okay, um, right. I tend to just kind of pull up what I need and then I hide stuff as much as possible okay. when I don't need them. But yeah, you can move these here. I also have Copilot chat here, which is one that I'll only touch on quickly because I know you have to request access for it. Um, this is my Stack Overflow replacement in many cases. Again, I don't like to leave my editor here because I might get distracted. Now, <laughs> yeah. Obviously, sometimes you have to. If you're pulling up documentation and things like that, you're going to have to leave your editor. But the less I have to do that, the better. Uh, so yeah, I definitely use Copilot Chat all the time when it's like, oh, I, how do I do this? Da, da, da. And I just I look at it. I look at the answer and I go, that sounds about right. Or you know, maybe maybe it's you know a little confused on what I asked, and then I ask it again in a different way. Um, or provided a little bit more context, and then we keep going. Um, and the chat's been going really, really, really appreciating all of the things that you've been sharing. Uh, chat, if you have more questions about maybe GitHub Copilot or the things that Jay's showing about their efficiency uh, with um, uh, VS Code, pop them in the chat, and we'll bring them up on screen, and we'll answer things. This is a conversational episode. I'm, I'm really excited you're here. This is great. I've already learned like a half a dozen things, so... <laughs> Cool. So I'm going to move on to the next one, which okay. is a little different. It's like, okay. I would call it like part two of, part of our little three part exploration here. Okay. Um, so we've, we've been playing with PRs. These are things that other people have done that we're like, this is cool. Go ahead. Let's review this. Looks great. You know, pass and we're off to the races. What about things that I want to work on? 
Right. Well, that's where the issues side of this comes in. Now, I should have deleted these first because now I don't have anything to talk about. But you can see that there are some other ones here that are like recent issues and created issues. This project actually builds uh, a website using three different web platforms with yeah. either Flask, Fast API, or Django. So because we're doing that, we actually have to kind of like isolate which issues exist where. Uh -huh. So the way that I've done that, and actually I can just hit the little edit button here, right. is there is a setting here that you can select and you can just add these queries as much as you want. So let's add a new query. Let's see everything that's been assigned to me. And it's just JSON. So if you know JSON, you know that that's going to need a comma, but we can do label. And yeah, we're going to just call it my issues. Why not? I like that. Uh, good job, Copilot. This is cool. From there, we hit query. Thank you. And Copilot has kind of given me a little bit of a hand here because it's looked at all of these other ones. Yeah. And <laughs> it said, okay, I kind of get the pattern. If the assignee is the user and the state is open and it's in this repo, let's sort by created description. Let's do that. And then what we should see here is, yep, there it goes. It literally changed live based on these are all the issues that have been assigned to me directly. And if I want to look at them, I just hover my mouse over it and I can actually see what the content is of the issue as well as the issue number. Um, this so, is and cool. These are active links. I can just jump in here and look. Oh, this one's a little cut off. So I can just click on it, get a little bit more information and just drag that up here. Well, I thought I could drag that up here, but then the window disappeared. There we go. Um, sorry for people's retinas. Uh, GitHub dark mode. I need to turn that on. I uh, like GitHub in my light mode. That's my <laughs> difference. I do all of my apps in dark mode and then my uh, my browser things are in, in light mode. But anyway, I, I just co-sign that. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. We're not going to be in that long. So I can just quickly jump in and, and make those things happen and see what's going on. And if I wanted to immediately start working on these, uh, let's see, uh, change AZD template. Oh, that's actually done already, but that's fine. We'll just click on it anyway. This little arrow here is start working on issue and check out topic branch. So I'm going to I'm gonna do the, the nothing up my sleeve really quick. Well, there's some issues that I need to push up my sleeve. Um, right now we're in fast API playwright development because that's where we were. Let's jump to main really quick. Mm -hmm. uh, Main's got some things that's got to get addressed. Let's push that up. So, okay, now we're back on main. And we have a question about GitHub Copilot too, not to deviate, but uh, I don't know if this is true. I've never heard. I don't think this is possible yet. I don't know. I think we probably would want human intervention to read the question. Can GitHub Copilot check if the test runs successfully and merge them automatically? Uh, I don't think GitHub Copilot yeah. would do that. I think that would be a GitHub setting maybe that just says like, if all the tests pass, then merge the PR. I think you could probably even do a GitHub action that does that. Can you? Again, this is me talking out the side of my ear right now. So like, don't take that as gospel. I also wouldn't recommend doing that because you still want to verify that things happen. Um, yes. And a great example of this is if you're using something like Dependabot. Dependabot likes mm -hmm. to uh, install things and sure the tests might pass in one scenario, but then when things start updating, it could cause Dependabot like chain reactions to happen. This has happened to me before actually, where uh, one package got updated and then because of that, some other things stopped working that weren't really being tested, like documentation building and things like that. So I would still probably say like, hey, don't, uh, don't automatically merge things. That's just kind of a dangerous practice in general. You want to make sure that you you can look at the blame and see who who merged the thing so they can understand what happened and maybe undo it if necessary. Yeah. Um, I also remember there was a question from Pamela Fox earlier that asked about do uh, VS Code does VS Code show PR pop ups in real time? I don't think it does. It doesn't by default, but I know that there are some extensions that do this. I don't use them because you have to give them your API key. Um, you have to like authenticate through them. So that could be, that could be an issue. Um, but I, if you're working on just your own stuff, you know, your personal, your personal things, you could probably do that. And then, yeah, you would get notifications of PRs when they, 
when they appear, uh, or at least shortly afterwards. Cool stuff. And then someone's like, can you please show a demo of GitHub Copilot X? Um, I mean, I haven't done much with that. I mean, are you talking about GitHub chat? Like, I mean, I can, I can ask GitHub chat a question. Um, are you, are you cool? Like, I mean, I, I don't, I'm not going to ask you that question, but like, uh, let's see. Uh, I'm doing some fast API testing. So fast API, fast API testing with playwright. Nice. Playwright. There we go. And it's going to think about some stuff and probably give me an answer because I did not give it a lot of context there. I was just like, here's some words, do some stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, it just says, you know, you want to do some fast API stuff. There you we go. A test file and I have a playwright sprint next week. So I am very excited. Yeah. I, I would say don't just copy and paste this in and run it. Uh, verify that it fits your code. Um, I will say that the more code that you have written, the, the better Copilot tends to work because it looks at what you've already written and tries to match your style and your flow of things. Um, by the way, the one little thing that I wanted to talk about with the issue thing, if I just click this little button here, we were in main. Now we're in issue number nine. Uh, we're in a different branch here. So now I can start working on this. And when I'm done, publish, submit the PR and view my tests. Um, that was it on that one. It's kind of small. Cool. Uh, I don't know how much time we have left. How much time do we have left? About 30 minutes. We have 30 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to need y'all to ask more questions because I've only got like five or 10 more minutes worth of talking. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to open up this other project that I have. This is a project that I work on personally. It is uh, my little passion project. I, I built my own static site generator and... Now, this is a plugin for that static site generator that runs Tailwind. And the thing that I wanted to, to share with this, this is showing what happens when you can like take things like GitHub Actions and kind of build on top of them. If you're, okay. un if you're unfamiliar with how to build a GitHub Action, there's a really cool extension that I think that you added called Ghost. Um, yes. I, don't, I don't use it. I kind of did a different other little cheaty thing where I, I just say like, Hey, uh, Copilot, write a test that, that write a GitHub action that runs PyTest for me, and it gets it mostly right. And I kind of know what I'm looking for. I just know that, like, okay, for instance, this is wrong, but I'm gonna put this on get push, and then we're gonna tell it branches main, and it'll probably figure it out from here. Yep, thank you. Uh, and then we keep going, keep going, and actually, I don't think we do anything there. We just leave that like that. And yeah, so we can quickly move from there. I really like that, you know, if you tell it what you need it to do, Copilot's really smart about that. I also double cheated and I have a, a GitHub action. I thought I had a GitHub action snippet. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a big fan of snippets. There it is, PyTest GitHub action. If I just click that, it's going to do that same thing that I did before. So if you are unfamiliar with how snippets work, you have to you have to kind of think in snippet like snippets in general like you have to do line by line in the body. Mm -hmm. Copilot's really good at writing these, so what I tend to do is just have the first example of what I want, and then below it I go, I create a comment. I just go create oh, bim mode save me create a snippet for this code. we should do a snippet episode that would be fun we i should have do a, a snippet ton episode. of snippets python snippets django ones i don't have very many um like fast or um, fast fast api because those aren't really my bag but i'm sure i can reach out to the cdas the cloud developer advocates because y'all are some pros on those and we could do a snippets episode that'd be really fun i would love to do a snippets episode i cool. definitely use snippets for uh, just inserting some Python code for me that I, I like to write a lot. Right. Um, it's really, and again, once you figure out kind of, okay, I need to add tab stops and things like that, it isn't hard. It's just kind of a mental yeah. process of like, I mean, to count the like four or five tabs. That's, it gets, it gets a little nasty, but like at the end of the day, it's, it's never too complicated. Um, um, yeah. 
you can also add tab stops as well. So you can say like, oh, hey, I want you to write this, but then like go bring my cursor up to this area so that when I hit tab, we're right there. Cool, 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 cool. Um, what were we, oh yes. Oh yeah, do, if you wanted to also add to the to the list of, of the agenda, we could do uh, nice diffs and this was a good suggestion. I heard that VS Code can do nice diffs of Python notebooks for PRs. Would love to see a demo of that if you can find a PR with, uh, with Python notebooks. I'm gonna pass that one to our colleague, Dr. Sarah Kaiser, because I think I might have like two notebooks in my entire history of existence <laughs> and this could be this could be kind of interesting if i tried to do that with little shout knowledge. out to a previous episode we had uh dr sarah kaiser and sujin Choi come in and uh, talk to us about jupiter notebooks so join us um uh there there's an akms link we have akms forward slash python pulse playlist um let's see if i can get on the screen and uh, you can get all of our previous episodes. Um, and yeah, so that was great. And then we're going to have Sujin Choi again talking about Jupyter Notebooks, I think, next month. Yes, next month. So join us for that. Um, I love anyway, it. Shout out to our, our very confident colleagues. Okay. So I remember what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So this is a Python package. Like I can go to, let's just do PyPI, render engine, Tailwind, CSS. And then that that exists. Like this is a thing. This is a thing in the world. Um, <laughs> it disappeared again, because there we go. Uh, yeah, so this is a thing. This is here. We can see this. We can go, we can see we're on the latest version. And I want you to remember this release history here. 2023 1.2. Trust me, we're going to make it a little bit easier to remember. Okay. I have, there's some code changes in here. Yep, there's some code changes in here. We did some changes. We did some things. Uh, I'm not, I, normally I would not push to main, but I know what these changes are. They're relatively small. One adds a dev container, and then these are ones to get up action. And then this was just a little bit of linting that happened. So nothing nothing actually changed, just some linting. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and push this to main. This is a trick that I think a lot of people forget. If you don't add a commit message to this, it prompts you to here. <laughs> yep. And the nice thing about this is this window can be accessed by Copilot. So mm -hmm. if I just start typing, let's see, linting, linting and testing, that's not really what we, actually, yeah, we did, linting and testing with GitHub Actions. Thank you, that's really smart. Also added a dev container for VS Code. Look at that, nice. see? It knows exactly what we're talking about. Um, so then I can just do that and then hit the little checkbox here. Those things happen, those things push. And then again, we can go into our GitHub Actions. Mm -hmm and hit the refresh button. That new GitHub Actions test that we just launched came in. That test is now running. So we can see what's happening all throughout our interface as this is going through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I added that because I wanna talk to the uh, Python package maintainers out there in the world. Hi, it's me, your fellow Python package maintainer. <gasps> I don't have this set up for dynamic versioning. I feel bad now. Never mind. We're going to pivot really quickly and we're going to pick a different window because this one doesn't do what I need it to. Um, let's see. One that we know has it. Let's just go with the big one. The big one will have it. So the nice thing about this is let's say we added some changes here and we want to push a release. We can do this. So as you can see here, that wasn't in the other one, and we can, we can kind of side by side these and see the different colors so that I can tell which version, uh, like what window I'm in, which is really nice. Again, shout out to Peacock for letting me do that. Cool. Here we have a hard-coded version, which means anytime I would want to update this, I need to manually do this. And then I got to do the whole twine thing. Then I got to add my token and all this other stuff. Or I could use something like Setup Tools SCM Yes. which is going to allow me to do a dynamic versioning. Yep. And that dynamic version 
is built based on my GitHub tag. So in order to do this, I just need to create a new tag. And I can do that by going to get create tag. We're going to call it 2023. It's July now, July 7-1. Mm -hmm. We're going to call it alpha one. And we're going to just submit that. And nothing's happened yet. But we see this build distribution GitHub workflow here. Mm -hmm. Last time it ran, it ran right there. Also, I will tell you why these failed earlier. That's not a problem. Okay. Um, and then we're going to do get push tags. And when I push that tag, what should happen, this GitHub action is designed to trigger when you push a GitHub tag. So there we oh. go. Number cool. three, we're here. And I am going to go into the nice big window here to see what happens again. Yep. Sorry for people's redness. Um, the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to actually Could you zoom in a couple. Of, um... Yes, there we go. Is that better? Yeah, yeah, that's groovy. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to actually test my deployment <laughs> and make sure that I'm not pushing code that's broken to PyPI because yep. that would be bad. Um, and we can see it's installing requirements. It's doing things like that. It's doing all those great things. I'm afraid to go and click stuff too much because I don't think I have keys set up in there, but you never know. Mm -hmm. um, but then after that, it's going to just deploy straight to PyPI. Oh, it's moving around a lot. So it's going to be really hard to follow unless we close a bunch of stuff. So it actually like publishes the package to PyPI for me. Yeah. So let's then switch over to PyPI. PyPI.org. Not Python Craigslist. Don't ask what I was trying to figure out with Craigslist. Um, I'm moving, y'all. I'm trying to find couches. <laughs> but, but we can come in here and we see that it's already, we're at 2023.71. Um, so yeah, we'll actually see this. It might actually fail if that release history is correct. Oh, no, right there. Look at that. Yay! 2.1. Oh, right cool. There. That's, right. that's, that's dope. Yeah. Actually, that's the wrong one. That deployed late. Am I still, yell yeah, I think this is actually going to fail, sadly, because, oh, no, there it is, less than 20 seconds ago, right there, 7.1.1. Believe in yourself. I believe in yeah. you. I celebrated early, but it was right. It was right. There we go. <laughs> so using that, we can actually, like, again, normally I wouldn't want to go in here because I know that all of that's going to work. I just uh -huh. need to be here. Refresh that really quick. And we should see check marks across the board. So everything deployed and I technically didn't need to go out of VS Code to not only check any PRs, check any issues, fix those issues, navigate between different branches, but then also use something like PyPI and deploy directly to PyPI. Now, I do this for not just Python packages that I maintain. I also do this for deploying my website, um, deploying projects to Azure, mm -hmm. anything that you want on the web, eventually like you have to do some work to get it onto the web. And if you just set up the GitHub action, which I can show you that GitHub action, that's relatively sane here. Mm -hmm. Let's see, publish. This, this little toad that you could like copy and paste this, it's not too much. It's just saying, hey, use this other thing to test everything. Once that's done, then deploy. And we're going to use setup Python. We're going to install some things. And then we're going to push. And we're going to do this okay. whole push action here that uses github.ref refs tags. And that's how we know what, um, what we're looking at. So this is only going to do this when we push our tags. If we push just code, it doesn't do this. If we do anything else, it doesn't do this. If we push tags, that's when it decides that it's going to do this. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. That's it. Um, I am happy to chat, answer questions, do things. Yeah. Uh, do you, Would you want to um, open up the, uh, the profile that I had and we can like poke through some, some new ones together that we like just learn on the fly? <laughs> Let's let's do it. I gotta find that link. I'll put it in the chat. No, I'll put it in the chat. It's a uh, it's uh Python Equal EMS. 
I think I have the original one. I just want to make sure. Yeah, this looks right. Yeah. Let's awesome. Create that, let's create that profile. And just for those who aren't familiar and have never used VS Code in the browser, it's available in the browser. And it's one of the things that automatically opens up. You could also just open it up in your VS Code proper app on your desktop. Yeah. So here, let's look at what we have installed GitHub Actions. I'm using that. Uh, oh, is this the one that I sent? I think this is the one that I sent. That's yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One second. But actually, I've never seen. What, did, did, did we look at the Markdown Preview one as well? Uh, we didn't, but we can. Yeah, uh, let's Mark do that. Markdown Preview is nice because it, it's GitHub flavored Markdown. So if we have uh, our README here, yeah. and we preview that, let's close some of these windows. Mm -hmm. We can see side by side, kind of in that same font and style what this is going to look like. Yeah. Um, another one that I would really like to highlight as well is there is also the mermaid preview extension. Um, I'm not sure how many people know about mermaid, but yes, mermaid, I love mermaid. Mermaid gives you the ability to create like charts inside of your markdown. And I'm really bad at doing these. So I am, there we go. I was really hoping it was going to help me out here. Um, and of course it did not. I think it's this. Uh, shout out to King Cat who said, but it doesn't have a compiler. But actually um, there is a WASI extension for VS Code. It's experimental and you can uh, run um, Python in the browser through this experimental extension. Uh, yes. Let me put that in the chat. That's it, that's really cool. And that came out in like June. Yeah. So we can actually see what uh, if we wanted to do some type of graphic here. And this would also work in GitHub. So we say like, oh, hey, cookie cutter. And then cookie cutter does Relo Cloud. This is actually wrong. This because it's all Azure. But we could do uh, Relo Cloud Django, Relo Cloud Fast API, and oh, and then Relo Cloud Flask like that. And then we could also then just keep kind of working on it and say, we also have our databases. So then we could say Postgres, uh, not Prost, Postgres, there we go. Nice, oh uh, yeah. And then just kind of keep, just keep moving, you know, however we would want that to look. And we could even, you know, just add it there. We're gonna call that uh, databases. And then notice how it's updating these things like on the fly. So maybe this isn't Relic Cloud. Maybe this is Web Framework. And now I'm going to save this because that's going to go inside of my, <laughs> my README. Nice. I love Mermaid. Do other people on the, on the call know Mermaid? I mean, I don't get to use it a ton because I'm not working on too many complicated demos. But I should actually integrate it into some existing projects that I have. So thanks for reminding me. And I didn't know there was an extension for that. Absolutely. Um, OK, we're going to go back Go back to your. This, this one's piece. still yours, but let's look at some ones that we might not have talked about yet. Uh, everybody loves emojis. <laughs> I, didn't I like adding footnotes to things. So those are all good. Check. I didn't support. know there was an emoji markdown extension. I love me some emojis in my markdown files. Absolutely. So so this actually gives you the ability to do kind of that GitHub-esque uh, emoji type search. So cookie cutter with Royal Cloud. Maybe we add, yeah. Oh, <laughs> GitHub already knew where I was going with this. Thank you. Uh, yeah, cookie. Oh, there we go. I love it. Yes, I love that. Okay, I am weird because I know you can actually just like hit a button and then you can have an emoji like modal pop down. I'm on Windows, um, so that helps. But I am the person who still does like great or uh, less than three and and hearts <laughs> uh, semicolon and colon cookies colon even when it doesn't like automatically pop up because that's the generation that I grew up in. I'm pretty so, sure there's an ASCII emoji plugin in here somewhere. Dope. <laughs> to, to definitely help you out with that. Um, yeah, so ah, cool. what other, 
Yeah, I think these are all mine still. Da, 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 da. We talked about that. We talked about that. We talked about that. The checkbox support just allows you to like look at your checkboxes and then you can click them in the preview as well to cool. close them. Um, yeah, YAML is hard. Anything, any extension that helps with YAML is always fun. And because I am a sucker for uh, coding pain, uh, I do use VS Code in Vim mode. Uh, so I think there are some benefits to it, but I, yeah, I, I just love using Vim for things because it makes me feel smart. Um, I came even... up in the programming generation where I, I didn't need to use Vim at all, but I definitely started using NeoVim for like a good six months to try to like prove my chops. And when you just get the commands and you like, you know, like the old joke, you got to figure out how to clo close it, <laughs> how to quit. Um, but like I... I think it's really helpful for just editing files and moving things around and like fixing up your bash scripts and stuff like that. I don't use it too much in VS Code though. So I want to do that. And that one of my things is also I want to uh, try out fish in VS Code too. That's one of my, Ooh. we should also have a terminal episode. So the thing I like about uh, Vim commands and VS Code is like, there are just some things that, uh, for instance, let's say if cookie cutter is supposed to be lower. Well, actually, I already see one issue that does need to be fixed. I can just come in here and fix it. And instead of doing the like, well, see, I got to even remember what the actual, what is it? Can command F. Yep. Command F. And then I have to click up here and do that. And then do like the find and replace thing and then figure out which buttons I want to click. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of easier for me in Vim if I just hit colon um, percent sign S and then we're going to change Rela cloud as it's spelled right now, cloud is supposed to be capitalized and I can just oh. do a cloud like that. Yep. Um, and then of course we want to apply, uh, you know, every time it's found and then I hit enter and then boom, it changes. Uh, again, not something that I would say everybody <laughs> needs to do, but it, it seems relatively easier for me just having when my brain is thinking in that, that use case to just be able to like then go and say, I need to update all of the instances of cookie cutter so that they're all lowercase. Well, in that case, I didn't do it because there were some other things. And we didn't talk about cookie cutter. I'm just going to put it in the chat so people have access to it because it is a pretty cool tool. And I am I mostly know it as uh, for Django cookie cutter and just like using it. But uh, what you all did was a pretty fun use case. Did you want to talk about we that? Can, or is that say, we can, we can do the demo. I, I have no oh, problem. We don't have the to demo. do the demo. We have, I don't know if no. we have enough time for the demo, but we can. We could do a speed run. Yeah. So the so cookie cutter, we're not going to talk about it in the perspective of like what we're doing with cookie cutter, because I think we're we're doing some really fun stuff. Um, but cookie cutter allows you to work off of a template and then build boilerplate code with like incredible speed. Um, so if I wanted to spin up a Django version of this Relic Cloud demo application that we've had. I just have to go, let's see, cookie cutter. Um, I have the demo on my local machine. I could also run this from GitHub. So I could do uh, gh colon and then my GitHub repo. And from there, I just hit cookie cutter Relic Cloud. I hit enter. It's going to ask me a couple of questions. Like, hey, do you want the name to be that? Yep, yep, yep. And then, oh, which back end do you want? Uh, that let's is go. so cool. Okay, can we just pause for a second? Because it's you have Django, Fast API, or Flask. That is in and of itself very dope. I mean, you can have the same app that you you've set up and built in three different frameworks. I'm just, I don't know. I just want to like, you guys are very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. Okay, cool. So we hit enter, 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 and then boom, like that, we just have all of these files that get created. Cool. Um, and you mentioned, you know, having the different web applications there. Uh, mm -hmm. Great example of this. So this is a Django app. You're going to see a settings.py. You're going to see mm -hmm. Relic Cloud. You're going to see inside of your requirements.txt. It's looking for Django and some of the stuff that goes with Django. Mm -hmm. um, when we're deploying to Azure, you're going to actually have some Azure stuff that's specific to deploying to Django. Mm -hmm. um, like, uh, let's see, like our secret key, like Django secret key here and stuff like that. But again, let's just delete all that again. Let's do Flask this time. So, yep, yep, yep. 
uh, flask, enter, 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 okay. And now when we go into our demo code, we don't have that same Django stuff anymore. We have Flask app, which has a cool. Flask blueprint app that we can yep. run from there. So it, it allows us to quickly build demos um, that include things like, hey, is your dev container configured for this? Um, is your GitHub actions and all of your different testing configured for this? Uh, all of your GitHub templates and things like that are configured. How did I get all the file icons in the directory view? Oh, oh, that's that's some cookie cutter magic. Um, you're saying how did I get the these icons to pop up? The like the Python icons and stuff? Or are you how did I just get the files to populate? There was a comment in chat, sorry. Because that is just an icon theme. Which, yeah, like, I don't know if you use the same icon. Sure. And I think my service was breaking up a little bit. I don't know. But um, okay. I don't know if you use the same extension I use for icons. Um, I use, which icons am I using? I use, yep, Workbench, Icon Theme. I'm using VS Code icons. We have a bunch of different icons that you can go through here. Uh, let's see, there's bearded icons, which look a little bit different. Um, there are some material theme icons that look like that. There's SETI. Um, I don't have it installed, but there is, we, I've been, I've been told by the VS code folks that anytime I'm doing a demo of icons, I have to then do the cage icons. Yeah, <laughs> this is, this is an icon set as well. Um, <laughs> So you can have cage icons. I've never heard of this one. This <laughs> so cool. Uh, maybe not the most helpful, but uh, you know they they exist. They are a little. I oh, we don't have a bicep so icon. I, I now need to go and add an issue to create a, a dot I'm bicep so icon I'm gonna for this. I'm going to play with that after the show. So. So That's yeah, awesome. you, you can set your icons to whatever you like. Um, I personally either go with the VS Code icons or the bearded icons. Um, the bearded icons are a little, little softer, a little more rounded. Uh, and also the Python one is pretty dope. So, so yeah, that is, that's like all I got. <laughs> I'm just excited to be hanging out with everybody. That's plenty. That's plenty. And we are nearing the the end of the show. Um, I think we can like do our do our wrap ups if Yeah, let's wrap up. I think your connection's going out though, so I'm not sure what those wrap ups are. Um, but I would say if folks want to learn more about the stuff that I'm doing, I'm, I'm one of those lames that are still on Twitter. I'm not on threads yet. I'm not cool. Um, I'm also on like blue sky and all those other things. So you can go check me out there. I'm at KJY Miller everywhere. Um, that's how you find me. Just all things KJY Miller. And then I can take a second while Don's internet is doing stuff. And if there are any comments, I can answer them. But uh, shout out to Don for putting this together and allowing me to come up here and just geek out about not getting distracted by VS Code stuff. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything else. Yep. Am I back? Stream notes. I think you're back. Oh, gosh. This sucks. But thank you. You're awesome. Keeping cool. It's quite all right. It's it's hot everywhere. So like I understand computers and heat don't get I do wrong. think my computer is overheating. <laughs> it's really bad. All right. I think this is the, the end of the episode. And we went through so much. And I learned about a lot of really cool themes. What I learned um, at the end of this episode also is that we need a snippets episode. We need a specific episode for just like efficiency in VS Code. So we can bring back that project manager one and some other really cool ones. Um, oh, yes. What other episodes? 
episode did we say we should probably just get like a like a themes episode where we could just go through all the cool icons and all of our funniest extensions so we got we have some cool stuff everyone watch this space because we have cool things coming <laughs> oh and we're also going to have a, a episode where you're going to go deeper and more into that cookie cutter uh repo that you all did uh, so i don't know i think there's like four we're like booked for the year i think yeah. we're, we're doing really great so uh again thank you so much for joining uh this is the python pulse we are here every second friday of the mo month sometimes we have bonus episodes on the fourth friday but every second friday of the month you can definitely find us here at 11 a.m pacific time 2 p.m eastern time 7 p.m gmt uh thank you all for joining another episode thank you for to our producer peggy who's pivotal in making sure the stream gets aired every month if you just stumbled upon this stream you can find us on twitch or youtube yes hearts to everyone in the chat it's been really really fun um thank you so much for the uh, for joining us if you like us please leave a comment like or subscribe to the vs code channel if you want to see our entire playlist you can see it at aka.ms forward slash python hyphen pulse hyphen playlist that's like the whole the whole gamut we got like eight episodes so far and we're just chugging along with so many new ideas so join us again next month um, you can find uh, the Python for VS Code team on Twitter at Python VS Code. And if you want to chat with us, uh, Pythonistas at Microsoft for all sorts of things, snakes, you can find us at our Discord link, which is um, uh, aka.ms forward slash Python hyphen Discord, uh, where we hang out and talk all sorts of things. So, can, any... I, can I do one yeah. more shout out? Oh, yeah, plug, please plug. Two, plug away. two more, two more shout outs. This is this is this is where I get in trouble for shouting out all my things. Um, I do occasional YouTube shorts on the VS Code YouTube channel where I talk about little things that I've learned with VS Code and what you can do with them. Uh, so check that out. Um, also, I love music. Sometimes I can't get my music rights cleared uh, for Microsoft because they're too expensive. And then I put them on my own channel. So you can go to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash kjymiller. Uh, there are also YouTube shorts on VS Code stuff on there, but the, the music is uh, absolutely a bop every single time. Um, and then the last thing is uh, I think that representation matters. And um, I love that we have two folks of color on the screen right now, two black folks and two black Pythonistas. I, we just started a Discord for uh, black Python developers. So if you uh, either need help or you can fit in that, that, that mold if you identify as black and you do Python things, shoot me a message and we'll get you added. And if you're not in that group, then, and you just want help in starting your own group like that, then also reach out to me too, because I mean, we, we need more communities where we see each other and we see more of each other like that. Uh, so yeah, that's all I got. That's, that's plenty. What do you mean? That's, <laughs> I'm, I'm just so appreciative of you. Oh gosh. Just like sending love through the screen. Um, <laughs> Thank you all for joining. I don't even know how to close after that amazing ending. Go find Jay on all of the spaces that they're in. And uh, we'll see you all next month.